Now, all this week, we've been seeing the amazing work of Children's Hospice Southwest. Tonight, in our final report to mark the charity's 25th anniversary, we meet the people who make it all possible, the fundraisers. Yes, thousands of people across the region get up to all sorts of antics and stand in all sorts of weather, shaking tins to raise money. It costs around £8 million a year to run the three children's hospices in Cornwall, Devon and Bristol. In a moment, we'll hear from the co-founder of the charity to tell us how it all began. But first, this report from Andrea Ormsby. They jump out of planes, they drive, they run. And they never stop. Nothing is too much for this army of fundraisers. Across the southwest, there are around 90 formal friends groups. Make mine a coffee, Michael. Today, a meeting for one of them to review the last few fundraising events. Firework night. This group alone raises around £20,000 a year. We do have a lot of fun. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> uh, we have got very muddy at the North Devon show, <laughs> very wet. Yeah, it's worth every minute. We have days when we think, oh, why are we doing this? But most of the time, it's definitely um, a feel-good factor, yeah. They spend about three or four days every week supporting the children's hospice. So why do they do it? It's a bit of a cliché, I suppose, to say to give something back to the community. But, but it is about that. You get to our time of life and you have more time on your hands. Um, why not fill it by doing good? I'm the head of a very large family and fortunately none of them are affected in any way like the poor children here, which is why we do it. We, we feel so fortunate. Um, and you've only got to spend time here to be drawn in to helping everybody. It's not just raising money. They help out around the hospice and come in for open days. It's not like a hospital where they think, oh, gosh, it's horrible to go into. The young people come in quite apprehensive on times. And then when they've come up for their tea and coffee, they yeah. go, oh, yeah, it wasn't what we expected at yeah, all. Yeah. That they, it's great. Oh, it's that's good. why when I've been on the tours with them, the feedback I get is amazing, actually, that they, they do find some inspiration from this place. That's good. Yeah, we're going up. The charity needs £8 million a year to run its three hospices, and the bulk of that money comes from donations. We have over 90 support groups spread from South Gloucestershire down to the Isles of Scilly. They're in many ways the backbone of our support. But if I tell you that we process over 50,000 individual donations a year from throughout the peninsula, you'll realise there are more people to thank than uh, this piece would enable me to do. So thank you everyone, whether your support has been a one-off whether it's been ongoing, whether it's been large, whether it's been small. The hospice has helped thousands of people in this last 25 years. But it needs to keep going for another 25 years and beyond that. So please keep it going. Keep it going for families like us and all, all the other people that come here on a regular basis. Since its creation, Children's Hospice Southwest has lived by one mission statement, to make the most of short and precious lives. Andrea Ormsby... BBC Spotlight. Well, after hearing about the amazing work of Children's Hospice South West on the 25th anniversary, the co-founder, Eddie Farwell, joined us in the studio earlier. We started by asking him how the charity started. Well, it grew out of the tragedy of our two eldest children being diagnosed with a very rare degenerative disorder, which meant that they would die between 10 and 20 years. So the journey that we would travel with them between diagnosis and their death would be a long and difficult one. And what was it about setting out this new idea, which must have seemed like an enormous mountain to climb at the outset? What was it about starting that that you were able to see it to the conclusion? I think it was just a resolve that we knew that the model of care worked. We'd experienced that in Oxford at Helen House, the world's first hospice, world's, world's, world's first children's hospice. And we wanted to bring it to our home region of the West Country because it was such a fabulous 
meaningful and in many ways life-saving service and, and, that, and that was just our wish. We didn't really have any thought of failure. Um, we thought we would just go out and speak to as many people who wanted to listen to us and see what happened. And here we are 25 years later. You couldn't have imagined back then, 25 years ago, that at this point, 25 years on, you'd end up with three hospices covering the peninsula. What do you make of the, the support and the generosity that it seems to endear? It's absolutely unbelievable. To a certain extent, it's bonkers. But I think it just underlines what a very special place we live in and what a very special country we live in. People are so, so generous. And we go out there with an idea, as many organisations do, and we throw ourselves on the mercy of people in our community. And it's absolutely fabulous just to hear what people are doing, to hear the stories of the families who appreciate so much what happens in the hospices, but don't get a chance to say thank you. So I'd like to say thank you on behalf of them tonight to all those thousands and thousands of people who've helped. Well, we wish you well with the next 25 years and beyond. Eddie, thank you very much indeed for joining us. You're very kind. Thank you very much.